Hello and welcome to another video from the only source from the only source of information you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today is just going to be some more test footage of my brand new Canon Vixia HFR70. But rather than just come out here and point my camera at some trees or something, I'm going to go ahead and make this video worth watching. So we're going to make this video about ball or bale or as I often say, uh, bale. Uh, Baal is a god that everybody supposedly knows about. He's a bull god, uh, and I've heard these stories so many times that I almost believe them, although I've never been able to find any historic evidence that the, the stories are true. Supposedly, when the Israelites entered into the Promised Land, they did, started deteriorating in their spirituality to the point where they were sacrificing their children to Baal. And so the teaching is that there was this big bronze statue of a bull and it, it was a furnace, and so people would take their children and put them in the arms of Baal, and they would slide down into his belly and burn. I don't know of anything to confirm this. I think this is just the church's way of uh, brushing over it and keeping people from asking about it and getting people to pass this story along as if it's truth. Uh, but the word bull that we use in English actually does come from the word Baal, but so does the word ball. I'm producing a, a video about Baal that's a little bit more deeper than this, and there's a reason why the word Baal is where we get our word ball and the word bull. But for right now, we're just going to talk about the, the nature of ball. When we see the word ball, we automatically think that that's a proper name. And there are a lot of gods in the Bible that, you know, their proper names are in there, and it's obvious that it's one single god, and it's, it's an actual individual like Mercurius, you know, that, that's where we get the planet Mercury, it's the god Mercurius. And uh, another one that's a really good one is Dagon. I've been told before that Dagon is a fish god, and if you go look at representations of him, he looks like a fish because he's got his head, looks like a fish, but supposedly, if you do any research, Dagon is the agriculture god. So that doesn't make any sense, but the Pope, the Pope hat, you know, the hat the Pope wears that looks like a fish, the Cardinals wear them, that is the hat of Dagon. That's where they get that from. So those are individual gods. Those are gods that are spoken of by name as individuals. The problem with Baal is that Baal is sometimes singular and sometimes plural and sometimes has like um, descriptors added to it. Like instead of just saying Baal, like all the other Baals, it might be called the Baal of Peor. Now, as a young man, I can remember hearing that because, you know, no, most Bibles, not all Bibles are the same. Some always render ba Baal as Baal, singular. But there are places where in the Hebrew it's very obvious that Baal is plural. And so some Bibles have stuck their necks out to render the plural versions of Baal as Baals. When I asked about this as a young man, it was explained to me by an old man that it's not real gods. They're false gods. All of the gods mentioned in the Bible are fake. They're not real individuals. They're not real wicked angels or demons. They're just stuff that people make up. And that the Baals were simply statues. So they could say Baals because if they had a statue of Baal in this church and a statue of Baal in that church, then those are, those are the Baals. I don't think so. There's too many, reference, uh, too many references to these gods in cultures around the world that are similar that this can't just be something somebody made up. I mean, there's a big ocean between the Americas and Europe, and yet there are serpent gods. I mean, even the, the Chinese, you know, the dragons, that, that's Draco of the Latins, dragon of English, uh, the serpent of the Bible. You know, the serpent is the one that seduced Eve, and yet later we're told the serpent is Satan. And so these are real individuals, and somehow they have the characteristics of the creatures they're associated with. Now, I've always thought that, you know, some of the characteristics of a serpent are like scales instead of skin, no hair, no arms and legs, uh, green. And the reason I kind of came to the conclusion that those may possibly have defined the serpent god, you know, in other words, Satan really looked like that, is because around the world, the serpent gods oftentimes will share those kind of characteristics. You know, why would these people all believe that the serpent god was green unless he was green. But, you know, the part that's in the Bible may not be about that. You know, when God calls Satan the serpent, it could be that he didn't have any hair or no arms and legs, but it could also be that he had the, um, 
the emotional characteristics of a serpent. You know, snakes are not like loving creatures. They don't want to be pets. I've never figured out why people want to have a snake for a pet. But they're just basically selfish. They, they don't have the ability to tap into the Holy Spirit and feel as if they're a, a small part of the greater whole. And that's the way Satan acted. So it makes re it's reasonable that uh, when we're told about the serpent God, that we're being told about a characteristic that isn't actually visible. So anyway, uh, I guess getting back to the point is that ba the Baals are plural, and the people who worship the Baals really felt like they were worshiping a, a natural living entity. And so uh, we have to accept that there were real Baals, not statues of Baal, but real Baals. And, you know, in the Bible there's uh, the wicked angels and the righteous angels. That comes up a lot. And some of them, I mean, some of the the creatures that are called demons and devils, very likely they're just wicked angels. You know, and we, and we even don't know if those are fleshly beings or spirit beings because there's too many instances where they seem to be materializing human bodies or they seem to be possessing human bodies. Uh, maybe even certain verses that make it seem as if they were living fleshly beings who died, but their spirit lived on. You know, I've been in so many different religions, and they get in these arguments over what psyche means. You know, it's like a Greek word that we get soul from. And then there's pneuma, which gets translated as uh, spirit. And so is the psyche and the spirit the same? You know, some churches say that the, the soul is actually the person with their spirit in them. Other churches say that the soul is the spirit separate from the body. And they have, there are verses that, uh, you know, if we go back and look at how these words are always used, there are verses that lead us to believe there's something else going on, but they're not definitive. So, you know, it's like, uh, I guess it's in Matthew, it says, don't fear the one that can kill the body. Uh, fear the one that can kill both the body and the soul. You know, that psyche, the body and the psyche. So there's a lot of stuff that has become permanently attached to doctrines of different religions that people will fight over. You have to be able to disassociate yourself from that because it's not that that's all wrong. Obviously, somewhere, somebody's pro probably got it right. But the reality is that we may have to wait till after the resurrection and meet these people and that have experienced these things. You know, somebody who's worshipped Baal and then and they can tell us who they are. But here's something I want you to think about. I don't want to make this a doctrine because I don't have any definitive scriptures to indicate that this is the case. The Baals, I believe, were just the political rulers of those different countries. Because, you, you know, you look back at everything in the Bible about gods, most of them are people who demanded worship who did not deserve worship. You know, they're false gods, not because they didn't exist. They're false gods because they did not earn that position. You cannot earn the position of false god. You know, you have to t take it by force, or you have to have people that are stupid enough to give you that power over them. And so, and you look at it, Satan's pyramid scheme, right? Who's at the top? It's Satan. He rules, and then underneath he's got a small group that's loyal to him, and then you know, all the way down the, the, to the base of the pyramid, there are these people that are staring admiringly up at these monsters. And so, a Baal is just basically a politician. You know, I keep telling people all the time to stay away from that filth. You know, politics is filth. It's, it's choosing a God. You, God has given us Jesus as, as our Father, the one that we're supposed to listen to. And we say, well, while Jesus isn't here, Let's, let's worship Barack Obama or uh, Donald Trump, you know. And they're not, uh, we're not worshiping them. We're, just, we're picking the lesser of two evils. Well, I'm glad you realize that because the Baals are demigods. In the Bible, they're always spoken of as demigods. That means that they have a, a human mother, a regular human, just like we do, but that their father is a god. And primarily, almost all of these demigods, if you go back and look at their story, you know, their mythology, their god is actually Satan. So if Satan has a dozen sons running for political office, 
and you pick the best one of Satan's sons, you're not picking Jesus. They're the Baals. Like I say, I can't prove that, but it does say... If you go back and read the Bible from cover to cover, and you keep in mind every instance where every, every time you see the word Baal, you think about it. It's obviously not a magical, invisible being. It's, it's obviously not always a fleshly being. But if you go through and look at every verse, you'll see that the most logical conclusion is that these Baals were just the political leaders of those nations. Oh well, once again, Canon Vixia HFR 70 footage being shot at 17 megabits. And if you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. <laughs>